up and he trembled. He was a powerful angel. And yet that angel confessed that he was held in the heavens by some demonic powers. Do you remember? Okay, so where did these angels pass to? Where did this angel pass to, read, to rescue Peter? The prayers made by the saints opened a window for him to come through. Are, are you getting it? Praise God. When you read that passage, it is overwhelming. That passage in Acts chapter 12. Things began to happen left and right. Light came in the dungeon. Where did light come from? Saints were praying. <laughs> light came in the dungeon because saints were praying. Praise God. The chains fell off Peter. Hey, chains falling off. Why? The saints are praying. Then Peter was told to put his shoes on. He, has, he had even lost his shoes. Shoes means the, the anointing to preach the gospel because the Bible says the, the shoes of the preparation of the gospel of peace. Praise the Lord. So he had lost. When people no longer preach, it means even prayer has been lacking. The anointing to prayer has disappeared. Then they move out and the gate opens of his own accord. Have you ever seen doors opening of their own accord? Recent hours, recently I got a phone call from, I got a phone call from State House. Hey, hey, now talk quietly. There is a door which opened by, of his own accord. <laughs> you know, listen, if you want doors which open of their own accord like that, tell somebody try prayer. Praise God. Doors opening of their own accord. Let's come to the conclusion. I'm talking about prayer, the kingdom of God. I've talked about that. And my personal destiny. My personal destiny. Prayer establishes a shield of protection for our family and community. Just not that, because it's important. Prayer establishes a shield of protection for our family and community. You remember Elisha? He was a prayer guy. And he was surrounded by chariots of fire and horses of fire. I wish God could open your eyes to see the chariots of fire and horses of fire around about Adam House where we have our offices. Hey. Okay, now write down this statement and I'll explain it, give a few testimonies and conclude. Prayer keeps the door open for the fulfillment of our destinies and opens all its intricate corridors and passages. I'll repeat it more slowly. Prayer keeps the door open for the fulfillment of our destinies. Prayer keeps the door open for the fulfillment of our destinies. And opens all its intricate corridors and passages. Amen. Now, we have talked a lot about King Saul. King Saul. I want to ask you a question. Was King Saul God's choice? Eh? Was King Saul God's choice? Some people say, if he was not God's choice, who chose him? Do you remember Samuel? Samuel was to choose a king for the Jews, for Israel. And God told him to go somewhere. Uh-uh. It was the other way around. That was David. With the Saul, the donkeys got lost. And Saul went looking for the donkeys. And ended up in the town where Samuel was. And Samuel, 
sorry, Saul and his servant went to the prophet of God to ask for a device because they had lost the donkeys. And as they were walking up to the prophet, God told him, that is the young man I talked to you about yesterday. Anoint him king over Israel. So who chose Saul to become king of Israel? It is God. So when I ask you as King Saul, God's choice, why are you saying no? King Saul was God's choice. He's the one who chose him. The word choice means God chose. Okay, God chose him. Okay, now listen carefully. When you look at the story of King Saul, it illustrates something very important. It illustrates something of something which could be God's choice and God's will being carried out by that person. But he makes blunders on the way and things go wrong. I was being told all the time that King Saul was not God's choice. But after my study of the scriptures, I came to the conclusion he was God's choice. Now, prophetically, listen to this. Prophetically, he came at the wrong time. Because when you count 10 generations from the time of Judah, Judah is the one who messed up things. You remember he got his daughter-in-law and they gave birth to Perez and Perez and what's the other name? Okay, and you count nine generations, you come to King Saul's generation. Now God had said he was not accepting illegitimate children up to the 10th generation. Now when you come to the ninth generation, God could not choose a descendant of Judah because the 10th generation had not come yet. Have you understood me? Okay. Now ninth generation was Jesse. So God could not choose Jesse from the tribe of Judah to become king because he was ninth generation. So the right generation was David, 10th generation. Have you got the study which I've done very quickly? Okay. Now in the ninth generation, the Jews come before God and they said, we want a king now. We want a king now. We want a king. So God said, now what do I do? Now this is the marvel with God. Even if you come at the wrong time, his will already accommodates it. So he goes over and chooses King Saul out of the tribe of Benjamin. Okay, not Judah. Because Judah's time had not come yet, 10th generation. Now, when I was wondering that maybe this was the wrong tribe to rule over Israel, God spoke to me that the Messiah had a forerunner called John the Baptist. Do you remember? Okay. And that King Saul, God's perfect plan was that he should be the forerunner. The forerunner. Okay. But he missed, he messed it up. Because when God chose him, he anointed him with the Holy Spirit. By the listen, it is his son who caught the vision. Uh, Jonathan. Do you remember Jonathan when he recognized David? He said, you will be king and I will be next to you. He had recognized the role which his father was supposed to play. That one over for Arana. So those of you who have problems with the king Saul, he was prophetically God's choice to be for Arana. To prepare the way for the Messiah. But he messed it up. Okay. Now the reason I brought that example, or oh, time is over. The reason I brought that example is when you plug into prayer, God's perfect will will begin to unfold. When you plug into prayer, God's perfect will for your life will begin to unfold. Praise God. Prayer keeps the door of the fulfillment of God's destiny in your life. God keeps the door open through your prayer. But there is something I want you to understand because it's the one which will be key for you. You're becoming a madman or a madwoman when it comes to prayer. <laughs> 
there are intricate doors. When you look at the window, oh, sorry, when you look at When you look at a wall, you, you look at this wall here. You, you can see some doors there. Spiritually, some situations look as if there is no door at all. You just look and you see this nice kajansi filling the whole of the place. But there is a hidden door there which has kajansi on top of it. So when you look at it, it looks as if there is no door. It's just a wall. Uh -huh. as you engage deeper in prayer you begin to recognize actually there is a door Hallelujah. and as you continue in prayer the door opens you say hey I thought I had come to a dead end you mean there is a door here it is a prayer which opens up those doors praise the name of the Lord when I hit 65 years of age a few years ago, in our church, we established a, a you know, guiding principle that when you reach 65, we retire you. Now, we don't retire you from doing spiritual work. No. We retire you from administrative work as pastors signing checks and uh, you know, involved in the daily donkey work uh, of the church. We retire you from that. And we release you so that you do more important spiritual work. So we, we are available for preaching. We are available for, you know, counseling impossible cases which the younger spiritual leaders are not very <laughs> comfortable with and so on. We engage in spiritual work. But they don't care work. We leave it for the younger ministers. Amen. So I was looking first to retirement. And for me, I was very excited. Others have not been very excited about retirement. For me, I was very excited. Saying, now nah, I no longer will have that, you know, urge to... to I, I don't have to wake up at a particular time. Yes. Hey, amen. Now, when I was in my excitement, God spoke to me. You think you're going to retire? You're joking. I said, why? And the Lord said, I'm about to deploy you. I said, deployment at 65, Lord, you, it, it, it is a, you, you, you look, it looks as if you are rather late. I said, no. I deployed Moses at 80. So for you at 65, you are very young. I said, hey, maybe God is seriously talking about deploying me. So I said, but Lord, I've already been deployed. The last so many years I've been involved in ministry in northern Uganda during those difficult days of uh, prayer campaigns. We've gone into Sudan during SPOA days, getting permission from the soldiers, and it's very hard entering there. We've done all those deployments. God said that was only field training, uh, internship, field training. <laughs> I was giving you field training. Now the serious deployment is about to start. I scratched my head. I said, now, what ministry can one do after 65? Because we live in Uganda. 65, you are beginning to, <laughs> to lose strength. Praise God. But because of the way God spoke to me by the Holy Spirit, I began to realize God was serious. If Moses was deployed at 80, and God says, 65, you, you are young. Then maybe there is something serious God is talking about. So we began to pray seriously about this with my wife. Praise God. I cannot imagine the doors which has, God has opened the last four years. Praise God. <laughs> Things we had never dreamt about. In fact, some projects are overwhelming us. We are saying, hey. You mean God had that on his heart? Amen? Amen. Are you hearing? Amen. Praise God. Amen. Now, those intricate doors and windows which you look at the wall, it looks closed. But as you pray, you discover there are doors which are there which you never knew existed. Prayer opens the intricate doors and corridors 
for your spiritual fulfillment of the spiritual fulfillment of your destiny. Amen. Some of you have settled here. Look at me. Some of you have settled here. Are you seeing the level? Some of you have settled here. But God's perfect plan, there is something you have never even imagined. When he opens, you will say, wow. You mean, God, this is also for me. Now I'm realizing everything I've done in life up until now is nothing compared to what is reserved for the next few years. Amen. Even with you, God's destiny is going to open up afresh. I have been talking to my fellow elders, people who are beyond uh, 65. Don't come to the conclusion like ordinary people conclude that you are now in your golden age, retirement age. God does not talk about retirement. No. No. Moses, at 80, he had all the qualifications which he needed for the next 40 years. Now, Moses at 80, listen, delivering Hebrews from the bondage of Egypt needed somebody with Moses' CV. CV. Did you hear me? CV. Everything which happened in the deliverance of the Hebrews from Egypt needed a man who knew God face to face. It says no one in Israel has arisen like Moses whom the Lord knew